to the Matt and Kendall Hagee podcast. Um, this is going to be an awesome day for you to listen to a guest that we recently had on The Difference, Simon T. Bailey. Simon T. Bailey. The thing that I like about Simon T. He's so is, energetic. Is he's got a contagious energy. Yes. Uh, and his his purpose is to, he, he's a breakthrough strategist. I know, that was hard for me to say, breakthrough strategist. You know, but it, what it, it's... What is a breakthrough strategist? Really, in, in my opinion, in the context that I listen to those uh, that definition is he's somebody who looks at a situation that everyone else is looking at, but figures a way to break through it and create a solution when others aren't even looking for and he it. He does. You know, have... th- th- there's a lot of people who accept the way things are because they think that it's a problem that no one can solve. Everybody's tried to solve that problem, but nobody succeeded at it. Well, that's where a breakthrough strategist walks in and says, here's what we're going to do, and here's how we're going to solve it. And, you know, Simon T's written a brand new book called Spark, Spark. and uh, I really like the concept of this book because it focuses on something that I believe is an endangered species, and that is customer service. Yes, he said customer is, don't look at it, look at the person as your customer, look at them as your guest. Well, and that's just some of the wisdom that he shares, but you and I have had this discussion about the places that we go and, you know, we're, we're going to go buy kids shoes and you walk into a store and nobody greets you. Nobody asks you if they can help you. When you find somebody and ask them if you, if they know where a certain item is, they look at you like you've offended them. <laughs> and, and, you know, so in, in an age where you start to see the deterioration of, you know, something that's familiar to most is customer service. You know, Simon talks about the ways that you can put service into everything and really increase and improve the quality of each and every relationship. Uh, it's certainly a, an eye-opening conversation for me, and I know that it's going to be for many of you who are listening. So turn it up just a little bit and enjoy Matt and Kendall Hagee podcast with Simon T. Bailey. Simon, it's Simon. always great to have you Thank here with us. Thank you so good to see you. Thank you so much. And, you know, I, I love that, a, a breakthrough strategist. I like that description because oftentimes when people are trying to solve a problem, they need a breakthrough strategy. Yes. Absolutely. You know, and, and you've created one in, in your most recent work, Spark. Tell us about it. So Spark is realizing when you find your spark, you find your joy. When you find your joy, you find your voice. And when you find your voice, you find your breakthrough. But you never tap into your voice or find your spark until you break away from the old way of thinking. And breaking away allows you to break down the process so that you can break through and have the spark. Spark. I'm gonna need to get the book just to remember all that. I know, I'm like, I'm telling Paige I was listening to you talk, I mean like, you know, like you're so, um, about Walt Disney World, and you said about, the thing that intrigued me was that you were starting out and you went, but you took the place cards and you moved yourself next to the president. The early bird gets the word. I'm like, he was there at 645, but he wanted to be right next to us. Yes, yes, and what I learned, Disney didn't hire me to do a job, because a job stands for just over board. They yeah. hired me to go to work and to create a moment. And when I had that epiphany, that's when I found the spark. So that's why it took them two years to hire me, 10 interviews, and a 10-page psychological analysis from Gallup because they didn't want to hire people that had an average way of thinking. They wanted to hire a spark that would make a difference for their guests. Yeah, they they didn't want somebody to fulfill a place or a position. They wanted somebody to create something. And, And really, you know, there's a lot of people that I think with that understanding and perspective about the work that they do, they create so much more value for the organization that they're engaged with. Totally. You know, there's a lot of people who tell you where they work, you know, but they will not tell you, you know, what it is that they do that makes a difference in the lives of others. And I think when they find that difference that they're making, then they suddenly recognize, hey, this is what I do that nobody else can do. Absolutely. So what is it that you see in, in, you know, as you talk about the old way of thinking and, and, you know, Mm. breaking out of paradigms, these are familiar phrases that, you know, maybe 20 years ago, uh, people heard them and thought, well, that's interesting. But now they hear it. Oh yeah. You know, everybody's talking about breaking away from the old and on with the new, but what do you see when, when people really start to understand and grasp that they have to have a unique ability to accomplish their task that is strictly theirs? Yeah, so what happens is people tap into their purpose and they stop chasing a paycheck to recognize how do I add value where I am? How do I see the new and the old 
and the old and the new mm -hmm. and become relevant wherever I'm at. Because it's not about what I can get from you, it's about what I can give to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you do that, I come from a place of abundance and love instead of scarcity and holding on. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you have an opportunity to invert what most people consider to be the mainline thinking. Yes. Uh, and, and I love the fact that you point out, you know, bringing the old into the new and the new into the old, because I'm often a proponent of the fact that principles never change. No. Application does, That's right. That's you know, right. but, but, but That's principles right. never change. And, yes. and so whenever people start to want to really innovate, sometimes they say, hey, hey, you're abandoning a principle. We can't do that. You know, I mean, the principles of flight haven't changed since the Kitty Hawk took off. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and, and if you abandon those principles, you're going to crash, yes. you know. Uh, so, you know, what are the things that, that people see in, in terms of customer service? Because Ken and I talk about this all the time. In my opinion, by and large, customer service, if it's not dead, it's like on the endangered species list. It, <laughs> no. it, it needs to you be can't on, go to a store yeah, anymore a watch group and somebody needs is to there advocate to for customer help service. You with kids shoes or anything. <laughs> I'm like, can anybody help me here? Yeah. So what I teach, and this is uh, being with the folks at Chick-fil-A that yeah. I was one of my great clients, is customer service is dead. It is about customer love, or what I call platinum service. Yeah. So in the 20th century, customer service is going the extra mile. But in the 21st century, platinum service, or customer love, is going the extra inch. From your left ear to your right ear is six inches. So what we need people to do is to think about what they do. You're talking my ears? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm listening to really six <laughs> inches. <laughs> Let me see, where's my phone? Okay, yeah, you go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what we need people to do is to think about what they do, yeah. not just do it. Do so that's why when you go to Chick-fil-A, the people that work at Chick-fil-A are a little bit different yes. than other places because they go the extra inch. What's the extra inch? They ask you your name. What yeah. other place asks you your name for a two minute experience yeah. that's over just like that? Yeah. But that is customer love that comes through when a person hears their name. Oh. That's my name. That's my name. Absolutely. I mean, just like how you greeted me, you knew my kids' names. Yes. And then also you mentioned your book about making your customer your guest. Yes. Don't look at them as a customer. They're your guest. So I'm your guest here on the show. Mm -hmm. And today I was greeted, greeted by Violet. And she says, hello, how are you? And I was like, great. Oh she went the extra inch yeah. by standing up to greet me with a smile. Well, and you know, in terms of the conversation about principles and applications, one of the reasons why customer services is an endangered species is because technology has created a brand new application. It's created a convenience. It's created uh, an opportunity for people to acquire things that you know customer service used to create. Mm -hmm. and, and I think a lot of times people felt that customer service was a means to an end for transaction. Yes. If I'm nice to the customer, he'll buy the washer. Yeah. If I'm nice yeah. to the customer, he'll get the car. You know. But whenever somebody really finds value in another person, mm -hmm. the transaction isn't the goal. It's just the interaction. Right. And that interaction can lead to a, a multitude of engagements. Mm -hmm. You know, so when when you visit, you know, with Chick Fil A or, or a retail business, you know, they obviously see a lot of this uh, and, and value it in terms of their corporate culture and the outcomes of, of what they're trying to accomplish as a business. What do you say to people who, you know, they're trying to create value in themselves? How do they treat the world? Yeah, so I think three things. Number one, wherever you are. Be high touch, not just high tech. Number two, how do I listen to understand what you need instead of listening to respond? And then number three, how do I identify how to create an experience that benefits you, not just me? So in other words, how do we move from me to we? And when we do that, I become a value to you. Be the spark, you know, platinum service to making your customer the guest. But how do you transmit this information to the next generation? Yeah, so it first starts with understanding that people size you up in the first three to seven seconds. In three to seven seconds, people are deciding no like, and trust. So the goal is to talk less, listen more. Oh, when I talk, talk less, less and listen, listen more, more, I ask questions. That's a big thing for women. <laughs> You see, I'm just listening. I see that's very good. I haven't said a word. How am I supposed to sparking. talk? I'm, I'm sparking. I'm passing this already. Yeah. I have 50,000 words, 25,000 words. Yeah, and some of them you say in your sleep. Seven uh, okay, yeah. Simon, sorry. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> but it's that goal of you knowing that you've been listened to makes you feel like, whoa, I'm yeah. valued because I get to talk about myself. People love to talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. So if you want to engage them and spark a conversation, make it about them, not just you. Yeah, and, and you know, I think that really the, the 
ability of somebody to make that a genuine interest. Yes. Yeah. You know, I don't think anybody likes to be treated uh, in a disingenuous way. Right. So whenever you take an interest in somebody, truly have an interest. You know, I mean, how are you? Don't let that be a vain and superficial right. question. Right. If they say, I'm not good, you know, don't don't That's pull oh, out good. that, right. you know, well, I'll be praying for <laughs> right, you and, right, right. and, and exactly. on down the road. Find out how you can help them because as I was mentioning in the beginning of our program about the general purpose and the specific purpose, you know, that epiphany came to me as I was reading Acts chapter three and Paul and John are headed, or Peter and John are headed into the temple. And now going to the temple to pray, that's a general thing. Right. Everybody goes to the temple to pray, yeah. but they specifically found out what God wanted them to do when they heard the crippled man. And they said to him, silver and gold, I do not have. They took a personal interest in his problem and how they could solve it. Mm. And, and if they would have gone to church, like normal people go to church, they'd have been like, oh, bless his heart. And, and you know, we're going to add him to the prayer. Right. We're going to pray for you in this service instead of saying, no, let's stop what we're doing right now and see what we can do to be of service. Wow. And, and I think when people find those moments, they have to really stop and say, okay, this is the specific thing that God wanted me to do today. And that really, for me, is what generates the spark. So you know what's so powerful about what you said is there's a difference between selling and connecting. When you sell, that's a transaction, but when you connect, that's a relationship. Yeah. And what those disciples did, they took time to build a relationship. relationship. And relationship is I relate to the cargo in your ship. Uh -huh. So wherever you were going on the ocean of life, wherever you are, we now have a relationship. Yeah, we found our common ground. Mm -hmm. you know, now, whenever you have the opportunity to travel and engage with people, uh, how do you see these trends finding a, a place and a, a platform in a you know, technolo technology-driven world, a, a digital platform world, an eight-second attention span world. Mm -hmm. you know, you're talking about engagement and connection, and those things require investment. And seven to eight seconds is not a, a, a lot of time to make that exchange. Sure. So three quick things. First thing, research says people touch their smartphones, devices, 80 to 150 yeah. times a day. Yes. Okay. Second thing, Chewy.com uh, will receive yeah. a call from a person saying, I forgot to cancel my subscription because my pet passed away. Chewy.com will refund their money, but here's what they will do. The next day, a van pulls up at the house with a sympathy card oh, okay. and flowers from Chewy.com yeah. because they understand in a high-tech world, how do they be high-touch and uber responsive uh -huh. to connect with you. Nice. The third thing is we are now in the recommendation economy. So doctors are being rated, professors are being rated, and everybody has to think, when I have a moment with you, how do I make that moment genuine? And churches are being human? rated. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you can go and find out what reviews online are about the church you go to on Sunday. You know, what, what used to be uh, sacred is now criticized. Yes. And, and, and yes. you can either decide that that's wrong or you can do something about it. Mm -hmm. you know. So every church, every business, every organization has to say, how do we embed the chip? I'm going to borrow a line from Disney, not that we're trying to make the church mm -hmm. a Mickey Mouse operation. I get it. No, I get it. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> if we treat it every Sunday like opening day, that's right. Know, yeah. So every usher, the parking lot attendants, everybody understands yeah. this might be the moment. You may never come back to this church again. Correct. Did we touch you? Did we make you feel valuable? Did yeah. we see you? Because that's an emotional deposit into your emotional bank account. As the interest grows in the account, you become the unofficial marketing department for this church, for this business, and you will yelp to others about what just happened. Yeah. Something I tell the, the staff and, and the team members here at Cornerstone is value is added when engagement is increased. Yes. The more that I can engage you, personally, spiritually, financially, emotionally, the more value that I represent in your life. And, and as a ministry, that's what we want to do. We want to add value oh, to wow. somebody. We want them to feel like, hey, the reason I'm a part of that is because this is what I receive from it. Yes. And, and if we're basically the conduit through which God can send the blessings that he has for that person right. through the ministry, then we've increased engagement and we've added value. Wow. And, and uh, you know, in a high tech, fast paced world, it's really those places of engagement that whenever Maybe all of the superficial stuff, when, when the Wi-Fi goes out, you know, who are they going to reach for? Who are they going to turn to? It's going to be the people that were there to say, you know what, regardless of what the social media profile is, regardless of what the bank account says, we care about you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that high touch capacity that really makes a difference. When people want to get uh, information from Simon T. Bailey in their hands, what's the best place for them to do it? They can go to simontbailey.com. Great. Awesome. 
Well, simontbailey.com is, is just a website, but the individual sitting here on the couch with us is a breakthrough strategist Ooh. and an innovator that, yeah. I mean, we've only had eight <laughs> minutes here and I've already come up with like 17 things that I need to get done <laughs> in the next five minutes. But Simon, thank you thank so you much you for so joining much. us. Thank, thank you so much. You know, one of the things that Simon said that was very insightful, and I forget about it, is that we live in a world that's reviewable. You know, he's talking about how everything gets a Yelp. You know, churches get reviews and, and you know, restaurants businesses, get reviews and businesses yeah. get reviews. And so in a world where that kind of communication is available, it is so important to consider your image and how you are helping and serving others whenever they engage with your organization. And speaking of reviews... Yes, leave us a review. We want you to tell us what you think about the podcast. Be honest. We want to see. We want to read them. So share with a friend and leave us a review. Subscribe today. Yeah, you get the opportunity to you know tell us things that you would like to see and hear uh, right here on this podcast and be able to share with us testimonies of how this podcast is making an everyday difference in your life. But please help us out. Leave a review. Join us by being a subscriber, and we look forward to seeing you again very soon on the Matt and Kendall Hagee podcast.